Good morning. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to the prophetic word of the day. Whee! Chris has just drank. I haven't drank it yet, but I'm working on it. A black rifle. This is espresso mo man, I'm feeling it like right here. Ding -a -ling -a -ling -a -ling. Uh, he is, bless it, bless it, bless it. Morning. Good morning. As you, morning. Hello, good morning, Brian 100% Friebel. As you're jumping on, tell us hello. How are you? And let us know that you have joined live with us this morning. We are via remote from our undisclosed location. And we are having an incredible day, an incredible, incredible morning, morning this morning. Hey, Blake, We can't say that we are with the Brown fam. We're at Brown Town Compound. We're at the Brown, y'all can laugh, it's fine, you know. I guess. So we have a studio audience this morning. So studio audience, would you he give does us a, not give take, a clap? Give a clap for the P-Wad over He does here, not P take note for um, undisclosed, does he? It is undisclosed, <laughs> but it doesn't. That Chris, don't mean they're he just, here. Doesn't mean. Oh my God, Chris. Hey Alexis, you're supposed to be working. By the way, your cookies put a pound on me. <laughs> yeah, I went. Boom. I worked out, and now the whole world's going to know it on the P-Wad. I ate your cowboy cookie, and I gained one pound. So. Who's ever had a cowboy cookie? But then I also ate three of your other sugar cookies. So. This morning? Uh-uh. And they're snickerdoodles. Last night. Well, the snickerdoodles went down like a baby angel, and the cowboy cookie I ate last night, and I finished what? working Stop. out. Stop. Somebody take that away from him. He cannot have this coffee. All right. This P-Wad is sponsored by Black Rifle Express. It's really not. It'll be done in three and a half minutes. So it's if y'all are ready for this. <laughs> It's hey, really turn that not. down. I'm going to turn this down. She's in the car listening. Get ready to eat a bunch today. I will not. Okay. Oh, my goodness. So, um, do you got anything that you need to tell anybody? I am just so thankful to be here, and I am not are. drinking the Black Rifle, so I am composed. All right. Share this tag. <gasps> this, get this word out there this morning. People are going to need to hear this. Got a word for you that the Lord gave me sitting yes. out on a beautiful porch looking out over the cornfields. Hallelujah. All right. Go with me to John chapter 5, verse 30 in the New Living Translation. John chapter 5, verse 30, New Living Translation. Again, share this, tag this, get this word out there to everybody that you can. Father, we thank you for your word. Yes. Let your word just penetrate to the very marrow of our bones, shift our DNA so that we look more like you. Father, may we know you like we've never known you before in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody's ready. Dana Starnes is out there. Go ahead and throw the scripture up there for me, somebody. John chapter 5, verse 30, New Living. Dana got it. All right. I Thank can you, do... sis. Now, if you, we weren't, we were traveling yesterday, so we weren't able to jump on, but the day before, we talked about Jesus, and he said, I can mm -hmm. do absolutely, for the Son of God can do absolutely nothing by himself, but with mm -hmm. the Father, he can do all things. So you keep coming down the scripture, and we get down here to John 5, verse 30, and Jesus says again, I can do nothing on my own. I judge as God tells me. Therefore, my judgment is just because I carry out the will of the one who sent me, not my own will. Okay. I carry out the will of the one who sent me, not my own will. Hey, Wiley's, good to see you guys. Um, people ask me this question all the time. What is the will of God for my life? All the time. What is the will of God for my life? And my answer is always the same. I don't know. Because first of all, it's not my responsibility to know God's will for your life. It's your responsibility through relationship to get to know him, to know exactly what it is that God has called you to do. Amen. Okay. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sum some of this up here because there are <coughs> situations like with spiritual sons and daughters and people that are close to me. Now, if God gives me a prophetic word, that's one thing, and I'll cover that after I cover this. But spiritual sons and daughters is different because I am close to them and I am in relationship with them, okay? Mm -hmm. I had a spiritual son come to me one time, and he said he was wanting to go into full-time ministry. And he said, man, God's opened up a door for me to um, be a college pastor mm -hmm. at this church. And he was so excited about it. He goes, man, I mean, this is just a great opportunity. And I can, it's like a place where I can start to build and blah, blah, blah. And go into this college. And he said, what are your thoughts about this? What do you think? And I said, you know that not one time in any of our conversations have you ever said God's called you to college students. Not one time. 
So if you've never told me that God's called you to a college ministry, why would you go do it? Just because it's a stepping stone? Don't use ministry as a stepping stone. It's like, I'm going to use Jesus as a stepping stone to get somewhere that, no, 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 no. He will move you where he needs to move you, but you shouldn't be doing something just for the sake of doing it because it sounds good, got a good title or something like that. What you should be doing is hearing from the Lord. Now, I will take you back to my immature stages in ministry. And when I got saved, I had a man tell me, he goes, you know what? You do good in student ministry. And literally what that meant was there's a hole in the student ministry and we want to fill it with you. So not knowing how to pray and, and at that moment and really ask the Lord, am I supposed to be a student pastor? Because another man told me I went and did what they said. Now, here's what I wanted to bring up about the prophetic words. If somebody throws out a prophetic word over you mm -hmm. and begins to say, you're called to the missions, you better make sure that God's called you. You go to Zimbabwe, you'll die. Amen. Because if you're not called to go there, you have no business being there. If you're not called to pastor, you have no business Amen. pastoring. If you're not called to any of these things, don't do it, okay? Because you won't have the grace to do it and you'll struggle through it. So, but even though, now watch this, I, I, we, we were student pastors mm -hmm. for 16 years or something, 16 and, 16 and, a, half and a half years. Student Even families. and I'm gonna tell you what it was. It was hell. Okay, lost my hair. Oh my gosh! Um, <laughs> it was crazy. Okay. There were good times. It was and, a strain. It was hell is a oh baby. Okay, well whatever. Oh baby. So, Share um, this, tag this, get this word out there. Oh, that's a good little, <laughs> uh, you know, plug. Okay, but what, listen to what I'm saying. Even though I know that God didn't literally just call me to student ministry, mm -hmm. He did bless it but not without a lot of strain, okay? A lot of strain With on a you. a lot of strain on me to do something that I felt like I was called to because man told me, mm -hmm. and secondly, did not know how to get out of it because I wasn't taught correctly how to hear from the Lord, but I was mm -hmm. only listening to a man and then trying to hear from God. That's another story. But let's talk about the will of God. Because today, doing what I'm doing today, there's nothing like being in his perfect will. Because when you're in it, the blessing is amazing, okay? What is, people ask the question, what is the will of God for my life? Number one is this, Luke chapter 10, 27. Luke chapter 10, verse 27, I'll give you the will of God for your life. And if you will get this, you will be able to... Um, Take this and then put everything else into it. But you have to have this verse. Luke 10, 27 says this, that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. Love your neighbor or with all your strength and you shall, all your mind, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. This is the perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your spirit. And love your neighbor as yourself. This is his perfect will. So everything that we do from now on is added into that by God. But if we're not doing this first, if we're not, mm -hmm. if we're not loving the Lord our God and our neighbors and loving him as ourselves, then there's nothing that you can't build upon any other foundation than Jesus Christ. That's it. And every other thing is going to crumble. So when you look at the word will, this is the actual Greek translation. It is an act of will. It is the will of God, sometimes as a will to be recognized, sometimes as a will to be obeyed. So we have God's will. We need to recognize God's will. And I know it says sometimes here, but we need to obey God's will. Jesus was able to do all that he did because he was obeying the will. Now here, I'm gonna give you two words, direction and calling. He was able to do what he did because he was obeying the direction the father gave him through his calling from the father, which is why he could do what he did. People ask this question. Why is it I lay hands on people, lay hands on the sick and nothing happens? Here's my answer. Are you in the will of God? 
because he's not your mirror. He's not your magician. You can't use him as a magic trick. You can't use him to gain fame. You can't use him in order to uh, publicize your ministry, your name, or anything like that. If you're not in his perfect will, no wonder that people aren't getting healed. Okay? Next question. I pray and nothing happens. What's the answer? Same answer. Are you in God's will? Mm -hmm. here's, here's why. He's not required to bless your dysfunction. Wow. And many people are in a dysfunctional place and thinking, well, God, will you bless me? And he's like, I can't bless this. And if you're one walking around in this dysfunction and you want me to bless it, then you'll stay there. So the only way to get you out of that is first we got to deal with this dysfunction and get you out of that to where you're loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your spirit and loving your neighbor as yourself so that everything else is, is easy. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do I know my calling? That's good. Big question. How will I know it's my calling? Are you ready? I'm fixing to give you, and, and, and this, is, this is the end all be all answer right here. How do I know I'm in my calling? It's when you have peace in hell. Come on. That's good coffee. Peace in hell. Not just peace when it's all good. That's good. And that doesn't mean that it's going to be easy and it doesn't mean that it's always going to be hell. So don't get that. Anybody that tells you all ministry is always going to be hell because if you're not doing uh, things and people are going to... No, shut up. I mean, I don't even want to hear that mess because it, it doesn't make... I can walk in peace mm -hmm. knowing that all hell is around me and it does not affect me. Amen. Peace when you don't know what's next. Amen. Most people freak out when they don't know what's coming Come next. On now. Peace when you don't know how you're going to pay the next bill. You know what I'm saying? Peace when you don't know when the, where the next assignment is. Peace when you're like, Lord, I have nothing without you. And all of my trust is only in you. And everything I'm doing, I, I, I put this down here. I have peace yeah. in the middle of the storm. Yes. Because I know that he is with me. Because I am walking in the direction in which the Lord has given me. I am obeying his word. Amen. Well, Chris, if you're walking in the Lord, you shouldn't be dealing with hell all the time. And you're right. You're not going to. But when it comes... It doesn't affect you in the manner to where you know, I'm not in God's will. I'm not in God's perfect order. Mm -hmm. And hell comes in and you're like, what do we, we it, it, it's a totally different, what do we do? Yes. In, in, in his will, there's peace. Out of his will, no peace. Well, and you can have Stress. peace. Stress. You can have peace in the midst of the storm. Jesus exampled that to us. You know, in the boat, whenever all the storm was going around and he's asleep and everybody else is wigging out. I love it. Peace. He had peace. Is the character of Christ. He's trying to teach us something. In the midst something. of the storm. He's trying to teach us something. And if you have peace in the midst of whatever's going on, then you know that you're smack in the middle of what God well, has called let's, you to do. Well, let's stay there for a second. If Jesus is in your boat and he's asleep and there's a storm, why are you freaking out? I mean, the disciples are running around like a bunch of 12-year-old girls up there screaming and shouting, slapping each other in the face, wondering, what's going on? We're all going to die. They come down and wake him up. And he says, why are you waking me up? Walks up to the top of the bow of the boats, points to the storm, says, what's he say? What are the words? Peace, be still. Mm -hmm. Then he turns around to the disciples and says, you have no faith. Because you should have been the one speaking to that storm. Mm -hmm. And if I'm in here with you, don't you think that we're going to make it to where we are going? Amen. Okay? When it looks like, Lord, you've, you've given me an assignment, and I see nothing. Nothing's happening. I don't see any progress. And the enemy immediately tries to jump on you with, told you you weren't going to make it. Told you this wasn't going to be no good. Told you. That's when you've got to know, am I in God's will? 
Because if you are, you can stand against that enemy. Mm -hmm. If you're not, it will bombard you. Okay? We, we Until we got to the place that I said, okay, Lord, I trust you to step out past mm -hmm. my own experience, past my own perspective, past my own, you know, strength, self-will, all this stuff. Remember what he says here. Jesus said, I carry out the will of the one who sent me, not my own will. Mm -hmm. All right. How do you also, how do you know when it's your own will? Because you're always offended. Wow. That's so good. When there, when you're, when you're walking in your will, there's a fence all the way, all the time. Cause you want it your way. You're walking in his, you don't walk in a fence. You know how to handle things. You know how to deal with them. Last thing here, when you're walking in the perfect will of God, he will bless it. People will look at you and say, how are you so blessed? And all you, I'm in God's will. I obey the voice of my Father in heaven, and I only do what I see the Father doing in heaven. Amen. Because I have built a relationship with him. Like we are right here, right now, about to minister tonight to some people that would not normally go to a church, but are going to meet in a home. And the Lord said, go to Ohio. Mm -hmm. So we get in the car and we come to Ohio. Most people look and go, that makes no sense. Yeah, but it does to me because I'm in God's will. Amen. It does to me because this is what the Lord said to do. Yes. And we'll do it again. And we'll yes. do it again. And when the Lord says go, we go. Mm -hmm. When the Lord says don't go, we don't go. But we walk in his peace. Yes. What's coming, Chris? I don't know, man. I'm just What's obeying. happening with our nation? I'm we just don't... obeying the Lord right now. You know I'm just what? going where he's telling me to go. I'm walking in peace. Yes, trust. trust what do we pray? Father. Yeah, what do we pray? Pray for America. Pray for the world. Lord, what is our prayer? Really? Show them Jesus. Lord, let them see you. You want to change America? God, we pray that they see you. People overseas are having encounters with Muslims, having encounters with Jesus because people are praying for them. Jesus, show yourself to them. And it's happening. That's what we need to pray here. Instead of saying, Jesus, change them. Jesus, show yourself to them. Well, that's going to change them. Let them see you. Because once they see you, that's what brings change. Amen? Yes. What's the perfect will of God? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your spirit, with all your strength. Love Amen. your neighbor as yourself. And he will show you what you are called and destined to do. Amen. Now, obey. Obey and do it. Chris, it freaks me out. I know, man, I did that. I did that. Leaving, leaving the uh, first and the 15th, that security. Leaving health insurance, mm -hmm. leaving, you know. Now, we're not saying that walking in faith means you go into full-time ministry. No, 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 no. We're just giving you our story. This is our testimony. This is our testimony. <clears throat> because sitting there saying, okay, what do we do? Mm -hmm. Step out in faith. Trust. Mm -hmm. Watch what I do. But that was what he was calling me to do. Okay, folks? Mm -hmm. I'm giving you my testimony of what he called me to do. And because I finally stepped into it, peace. Are there days when you get kind of what's going on? There are, but then I just got to go back to the word. Seriously, I got to go back to the first word. He said, Amen. step out and I'll take care of you. Get on this ship and I'll take you around the world. Amen. That is the obedience of Christ Jesus and he's taking care of us. Remember, I boast as Paul did. I boast in only Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I boast in, in the five, almost six years of this full-time evangelism, we haven't yes. called the first church. Yes. And God puts us on the minds and the, and the spirits of people and they call us. And we now this <clears throat> new journey that we're in on reaching those that would never darken the doors of the church. Amen. Greatest peace ever. Amen. Know the will of God, man. 
He's out there. He's waiting on you. Be obedient. Amen. That's it. And you know, your yes can change everything. We put a testimony out the other day of, um, and I don't know if you saw it or the not. So I, yeah, I'm just going to give a quick testimony of it. And it's, it's in reference to what you're talking about, the will of God, because whenever you're in the perfect will of God, your yes is multiplied and your yes makes such a difference. Um, whenever we got the call to host the Let Us Worship event, we'd gotten the initial phone call, many churches in our community because it was for Easter Sunday. They were like, no, 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 no. Everybody said no because they couldn't assimilate the task of what, puts to, what, what comes with putting together that large of an event. And so <coughs> we said yes. And what we did was instead of one church, host, church hosting it, we took it and we split the responsibilities between like five or six churches mm -hmm. and we all came together as a kingdom assignment. Yes, and yes. God used Chris Sorry. and I to piece and put this thing together. As a result of our yes, hard work, we were not paid for this event. Mm -hmm. We didn't take an offering for this event. Um, we are, you know, we didn't have a booth at this event. But here's what happened if you saw this testimony. There was a couple that came that knew us from um, Manchester, Tennessee. They've seen us in revivals and stuff before. So as we, as we advertised, they came to the event. The wife had a brain tumor and she also had some sort of spinal, um, spinal disease of some sort. I do not know exactly with the spinal thing. She comes to the event. She feels the presence of God and she is completely healed. They go back. Okay, she has the MRI done of the tumor in her brain. She goes back and gets another uh, MRI, MRI done after she brain. knew that she was healed. It's got her name on the MRI and everything. I didn't put all that. I didn't documented. post all that. It's documented. The brain tumor is gone and she is completely healed. Amen. Okay. But a yes that Chris and Davy Brooks, the other ministries, those other local churches, because we all said, you know what? We're going to be a little inconvenienced. Someone was healed Amen. of a brain tumor. Okay, your yes today matters. God's will is to use you, but your yes is going to make the difference. Amen. So are you willing to say yes to him today? I just feel like someone's watching right now that you may not have fully gotten all in with this whole Jesus thing. You have not fully surrendered to the Father. And we just want to pray the blood of Jesus over you right now, that anything that is hindering you from fully surrendering everything to Jesus, that you will surrender today because God wants to use you. God's will is yes and amen over amen. your life. But you have got to say yes to him. So we, if, if you're saying yes to him or if you need mm. prayer for that, you can comment or you can inbox us. Let us know because we want to mix our faith with you and believe with you that God is going to transform Amen. you so that way he can transform others through you. Amen. Amen. I'm done. Oh, well, praise the Lord. Well, we bless you and we <laughs> thank you. We have put a link here. We want for you to be a part of this assignment. Join with us in prayer as well as financial support. Your sending can make a difference and it can impact lives all across the globe as we reach others to see his kingdom advance. The link is on the page. It's chrisworksministries.com forward slash partner. Go there. You can make a one-time gift. You can partner, partner monthly. Um, and if you're not a part of a local church and you want the promise and principle of tithing, you can do that as well. We're so thankful for you joining on with us each morning. For those of you that join with us each day, um, or if you're brand new, welcome. We're so glad that you're here with us. We will be back on again when? Monday. We're going to jump on on Labor Day Monday? Oh, yes. Are we? I guess. I don't know. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. We'll we'll post. We'll, we'll let we'll you see. know. All right. I don't know. We'll find <laughs> out. We'll not, let definitely you know. Tuesday. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face yes. shine upon you. We declare no plague, no pestilence, no tragedy come against you, for you are the blessed and the head and not the tail. You're above and not yes. beneath. We declare that you shall prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. We declare right now that the righteousness of Christ Jesus in your life through the operation of the Holy Spirit be blessing unto you. We declare that you shall walk in the perfect will of God yes. over your life through relationship with Jesus Christ, knowing exactly what it is the Lord has called you to do. Amen. And we do all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And help us share this over all of your platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever platforms you are on. 
share this message of truth and hope for us. All we right. appreciate it. Doesn't challenge you. It won't change you. See you. Bye.